why is it that the United States produces this light form of crude, but our refineries aren't set up to process it? You would think that we would want to set up uh, refineries to actually process what we produce. Yeah, that that sure does make sense, George. But here's the problem: you know, you uh, you know, you, you you can't make what is it? You know, silk out of a sow's ear or something, and you know, whatever that <clears throat> biblical aphorism is. And so, back in you know, let's say World War One kind of era, mm-hmm. most oil was used to produce gasoline. You know, I don't know what percentage, but I'm just going to throw out a number. It's certainly greater than 50% and probably 90%. Okay. <clears throat> U.S. oil is awesome for making gasoline. Gasoline is a very light product, and you can use a light oil to make a light product. Today, the cash product of the world in, in petroleum is diesel. You cannot make diesel out of a light oil. Now, somebody's going to say, oh, yes, I know a a kind. Yeah, okay. But in general, you can't, if if you don't have the the heavy components that it takes to make diesel in the oil you're using, you can't make diesel. Okay. And that that only not not only goes for diesel, but it goes for a whole spectrum of of other petroleum products. And so the, the refinery system we have now, which was basically designed 30, 35 years ago, was designed thinking, oh, well, we need to have heavy products because that's the main thing the world needs. And the U.S. is by far the biggest supplier of refined petroleum products to the world. It's a, it's a huge part of our, well, not a huge part, it's an important part of our GDP. And so in order to be competitive, we have this kind of refinery. It's it's just, you know, it's that simple. Could we change? Sure, we could change. And it costs billions of dollars. And if the if the world was if all of a sudden, you know, some expert said, Oh, in the future we're only going to be using gasoline, well, yeah, sure, it would make sense to change. But the other thing that that you have to think about, not you personally, but you generally, the audience, is if you want to redesign refineries, you're talking about a 30-year, multi-billion-dollar process. All right. Right now, right or wrong, most investors don't think there's 30 years of oil and gas future left in the world. I think they're wrong, but that's kind of the general sentiment. So, you know, why in the world would you want to put billions of dollars into something that most? Why would anybody give you the money? A bank included, if they share this concern that there may not be 30 years worth of economic life. And so today, some guy on Twitter was saying, oh, we we need to reopen all of those refineries that closed during 2020, during COVID. And I wrote him back and say, who needs to do this? I mean, you know, the refiners, I mean, this is a business. This isn't a public service. And, And nobody... Nobody told those refiners to close those refineries. They did it on their own because they were old and if inefficient. And they took advantage of COVID and lower demand to do what they wanted to do anyway. Mm-hmm. And oh, by the way, refineries are not utilized to 100% right now because U.S. demand is down and world demand is down. So again, you know, where does this instant expert come up with the idea that we need to reopen refineries? I mean, are you in the refinery business? I don't, I'm not. <laughs> I wouldn't want to give refineries advice on what they ought to do because I don't know enough about it. But I know enough to know that this was their decision and they're not using their refineries to full capacity. Where did he get that idea? The news. Right. Somebody in the news and, and now it's a meme said, oh, well, we lost a million barrels a day of refining capacity during COVID, and that's the reason we got an energy crisis. Yeah, just go over there, flip on that light switch real quick, and let's turn it back on. Let's turn Our, it back on. That's not the problem. Yeah, you're saying that it's not economically viable right now. At what price of oil would it be economic incentive for those uh, producers to start it, producing again? Yeah, it's not price. It's demand. Okay. So is, so is the cure for high prices no longer high prices? 
Well, I'm not sure that was ever true, but I mean, that's, you know, fair enough. And so what happens is high prices affect people's willingness to buy products. And so if the problem were that refineries aren't making enough money, first of all, that's not the problem. Refinery margins have rarely ever been higher than they are right now. So the problem is decreased U.S. consumption of oil. And the U.S. economy is doing way better than a lot of the rest of the world. And we could have a long discussion about why that is the case, but just take it as a fact that is the case. And so, you know, we're, we've got some solution that's looking for a problem. There isn't a problem. If, if, if Americans want to use less gasoline and less diesel and less jet for whatever reason, then business has to adjust to that. We don't have to fix something that isn't necessarily broken, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think if you were to isolate it and say the problem is this, as far as the, the mm-hmm. refining capacity, that one of the big things that I think you're talking about, Josh, is if these guys are looking 15 years down the road and saying, well, we're not going to be using fossil fuel anyway, or at least we're not going to be allowed to by the government, then really at any price, uh, they're not going to go in there and drop the $30 billion uh, because of that 30-year time horizon. It just uh, it just doesn't economically make sense. So it is a weird kind of paradox uh, that we're in right now economically. That That's for sure. 